the introduction to neural network uh, with an example that is followed by the numerical example, of course. And uh, we will see also some little bit idea about the multiple perceptron. From this point, what we need to see, we need to solve a problem followed by the neural network. As we know in the neural network, how many layers we have? We have the three important layers. Those are known as input layer, output layer, and hinder layer. Input layer, the purpose of the input layer to just provide the input to the uh, network, and that is neural network, of course. And the output layer describe only the uh, what is the output or expected output or predicted output we are getting. But when talking about neural network, and we have the hidden layer. In hidden layer, mostly especially used for only the computation purpose. So when you are calculating something, so calculation will be done at the hidden layer, and that is the point you need to keep in mind while solving the any problem. So what is the problem we have over here? So before uh, before seeing any problem, so just I have some idea about the more and more detail about the neuron. So you can see over here. So with approximately 100 uh, billion neuron or more than the 100 billion neurons we have in our brain. So the human brain processes data at the speed of as fast as 268 miles per hour. Okay, so, so in the essence of summary, we can say the neural network is basically a collection of the various neurons. So more than the thousand, more, more than the more than the 300 various neurons that part we have already discussed into the while comparing between the human uh, neurons as well as biological neurons as well as the artificial neuron and now each and every neurons are connected by the synapses or we can say the interconnection so this collection will be organized into the various layers as we know those are the input layer output layer hidden layer and as we know the computation will be done at the hidden layer but in talking about the artificial neural network, there are several inputs we can have, and those are recognized by the features, or we can say the predictor. Uh, we can say these are recognized as well, predictor uh, prediction value variables. But in the neural network, we will not say prediction variables. These are known as the features. And uh, output uh, or the information that is to be generated by and from the single output. Here I am remembering a very important concept that you can understand. What is the difference between the uh, feed for a neural network or that is also known as a single layer neural network? Okay. Just, just you just need to keep in mind the important words over here, and then you can understand what is mean by the feed for a neural network and what is uh, the difference between the multi-layer neural network. So just let me give some idea over here, then you can understand properly. Before explaining the problem, uh, before explaining the problem, let me give some idea over here. Then you can just see. When I'm talking about the singer, uh, me, sir. yes, tell me, sir. Are you changing any slides, sir? Yes, I have changed the slide. It is a blank slide. I will explain something over here. Sir, sir, it is not reflecting, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is reflecting. Thank you. No, I think uh, the blank screen will be displayed. Not blank is a uh, see. I'm just writing something yes, over sir, it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is. Okay, 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 okay. So don't worry. I'm just explaining. Okay, now come to the point. See, we have we have the some input node. One, two, three. I'm taking. Here we have the some hidden layer node. So we have the four. We can have the many. It doesn't mean we have the one. See, this will be connected by this one, this will be connected by this one, and this will be connected by this one. So you can observe each and everything here properly. Now, from this point, you have a doubt, then you can ask me, just let me clarify the important points, then you can understand properly. How many layers of the hidden layer we have? We have the one, one header layer. This network is known as the single layer, single layer neural network. Let me clarify this important word over here. When we have, it is mostly cases, okay. Uh, when we have single layer of the hidden layer and that network is known as the, that neural network is known as the single layer neural network. See, what is the flow of the information? As we know, it is the information is flowing from the this direction, as you can see over here. So this is known as the feed forward neural network. Okay. So this is known as the feed forward neural network, or we can say in simple way, this is known as the feed forward single layer neural network. Feed forward single layer neural network. And that is the point you need to keep in mind. These are the input and these are the uh, hidden and these are the output. 
Just let me clarify this important points once again to all the students. Now, how many header layer we have? We have only the one header layer. And of course, when we have the one header layer, so based on this uh, information, most of the time, most of the time, we will have only the one output, one output layer. Input layer can be many, but output layer will be one when we have the one hidden layer. And that example will be represented by the feed forward single layer neural network. Now, this point is clear to all right now. Tell me this point is clear to all right now. Yes, sir. OK, when I'm just updating something over here with help of the different examples, then you can see over here, same exam, same number of the node as input I'm taking. I'm taking the more hidden layer at this step. Then you can see. Yes. One second, just let me cut this one. This one and uh, this one. And uh, right now I'm taking the two hidden layer. This will be connected by this one. This will be connected by this one. This will be connected by this one. And this will be also connected by this one. Same thing, this will be connected respectively each and every day. So here, what you are observing over here, all here node, all the nodes are connected with each other. So that's why it is also known as a fully connected feed forward neural network. See, each and every node connected by the each and every hidden layer. So that's why we can say this known as also known as the fully connected. Okay, so this is also known as the fully connected feed forward single layer neural network. That is true. Here I am connecting all the nodes uh, with each and every hidden layer nodes. Don't worry, we have over here. So now I'm just I'm connecting once again to all the nodes like this one, then you will be able to see. Here I'm just making an example of the fully connected. Okay. Now same this process will go for this one. Now this is same thing, it will be happened with the, all the respectively nodes. And next, I'm just also connecting with this one. So there is a net kind of the information we have. So this is also known as the neural network because each and every information is connected by the neural pattern. Now, at this point, what we have? We have, the, we have only the one output node. That is the point you need to keep in mind when we have multiple hidden layer then output of the uh, the output layer can have the more than one node output layer can have the more than one node because what we have observed here we have the multiple hidden layer and the process to be done at the multiple way so various outputs may have so it is it is also possible okay but in the case of the most of the time okay there's a probability we can say the most of the probability is saying to us then we have the one uh, hidden layer then there would be there is probability there is high probability there would be only the one output here but in the case of the multiple hidden layer the probability is saying as uh, there may be some probability it can have the many uh, node at the output here or it can have the one output output node. so it's uh, it's a requirement of the system or what is the value we are getting so here right now i'm taking only a single output node for understanding performance so right now i'm connecting this point now this is the my point so this is the example of this is an example you can understand how many layers we have over here here we have only the two hidden layers see i'm just marking over here then you can see over here so you can observe here here we have the two hidden layers okay and one input one output so this example is known as the i'm writing here multi-layer multi-layer neural network now again, you can observe observe over here the direction flow over like over here input up, input hidden and output. But we can say this is a feed forward multi layer neural network. Of course, we can say this is an example of the feed forward feed forward multi layer neural network. So you can observe over here each and every is node connected to each other here it's a respectively node hidden node and output node so of course we can say it is also known as the fully connected 
so by default you can observe here by default the neural network we are observing over here that is the, we have the feed forward okay so that's why in a simple way in a normal word we can write a single layer neural network or multi layer neural network when we have the single layer neural network then we have the what we have we have the perceptron board and it means we are talking about the one perceptron or we can say a perceptron that is the point you need to keep in mind we have the one Perceptron or when we're talking about the multi-layer neural network, then what we have, we can see we are talking about the multi-layer perceptron. We are talking about the multi-layer perceptron. Multi-layer perceptron or, or multiple perceptron. Okay. So the point you need to keep in mind that the terms we are getting from the various places. So how we are getting the terms. This is the idea. We can write like this is a multiple perceptron. Multiple perceptron. So tell me any doubt over here, please. You can ask me right now. Any doubt you are having, please. You can ask me. The difference between the single layer and multi layer, the feed forward, each and everything I have mentioned over here. Just tell me. Any doubt you have? No, sir. Okay, I'm just marking or dividing like this. This portion is clear to all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. After understanding the fee, uh, after understanding the difference between the multi-layer and single-layer neural networks, so just let us move to the our beautiful example we have over here. Now we are trying to solve our problem here. So what is the point you need to keep in mind? Input layer is also known as the features. Okay. And the output level is also known as the output layer is known as the level. Okay, so that me, let me explain here by the diagram B. Again, you can understand. Just let me move to the previous slide. Let me explain by the different color note, then you can understand. Just right. Uh, picking. See, these, uh, the input, these are known as the features. Okay, these are known as the features in the neural network. So I'm writing over here. Okay, now it is visible to all. The features means we are talking about the feature of the input layer. So this is also known as a feature. This is also known as a features. This is also known as a feature. And this is also known as a feature. So here we have the three different features, OK? Because input value is recognized by the features that is my point. And this output is also, this output is identified by as a label. So when we have one label, so it's OK, no problem. But when we have the multiple output node at the output layer, so we can say multi level. We have the neural network which is compromising or which is consisted by the multi level. Okay, so that is my point. Now it, it is clear to all right now, and theoretically you can read out over here. So several inputs we have, and those are recognized by the features you can observe over here. And the produce single output here, so which is called a level. So when we have the multiple output, uh, so definitely those are now recognized by the multi level. Okay, so that is the point. Now this point is clear to all right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So now after understanding this point, let us move to the one numerical part. So here we have a problem which is written over here. Students trying to do some study in some R, and just most of the students will try to sleep in more R. So they are consuming their art for sleeping and studying purpose. So here we have the, some data which are known as the features. So from the data set, what we are value picking, we are picking the some values. Those are recognized by the features as an input. So R study means R study is one kind of feature and R step means one kind of the feature. These are known as the input. So these are also known as the, our features. Okay, that is the point we need to keep in. So these are known as our features. So here we have the value only two and nine. So it's hard study means two we have. So that is the one feature which come from uh, which is having the one value that is two. And R step we have the nine. So by using these two important features, we will see what is the prediction we are getting. Okay, that is the point you need to keep in mind. And the test score is we are getting over that is the actual value we have. So from the our table, you can observe here we have the some input, those are the features. And based on the features, we have the our actual value that is 92. And 92 basically we have mentioned over here, but the information in the neural network will always represent by the zero and one part. So the ranges between the zero and one is required. So we can understand this value, we can write like 0 
and that is the point you need to keep in mind the each and every information in the neural network most of the information in the neural network will always represented by the zero and one value so that is the range okay so our value we are having over here 92 so we can trust once we can write 0.92 so 0.92 is our what that is the actual values okay and that is to be mentioned over here and based on the features which is mentioned over here now so we can draw our neural network like this one 29 so 2 is the one uh, one node value and that is at the input here and 9 is the one node value or we can say it is the one feature value at the input here so this point is clear right now this is the point is clear to all right now this point tell me tell me this point yes sir okay any student who have any doubt so right now we will try to solve our problem only this point 2 comma 9 that is our features and 92 we have all the actual sir, value sir you have to explain karo na ek baar 9 okay okay to see in our table some information is given so two belong to the r study or nine belong to the r slab it means in our data set we are picking the features suppose we have the uh, number of the features but we are picking only those features which are required to manipulate the our information okay for the understanding purpose in the neural network so we are choosing the important two features those are the r study and r slab based on these features suppose we are getting the test score value of the student that is 92 Okay, so these values will all be represented by the zero one form. Why zero one form? Because in the neural network, most of the output or all the output belong to the value in form the zero one form, and that is the range you need to keep in mind in the neural network value or result values always represented by the some range, and that range between the zero and one. That is my point. Okay, so this is the point you need to keep in mind while learning the neural network. So R study we can over here two comma nine. So two belong to the R study that is the one feature. Okay, that is the one feature. And R step is the second feature. So here we have the two inputs and these are known as the features and test score. If student is just doing R uh, two R study and slipping nine R and he or she got the uh, some marks in form the ninety two. So we can transfer this marks into the our value that is between zero and one. So we have the zero point nine, and that is the actual value. but we are uh, trying to uh, solve this problem by neural network and we will see what is the prediction we can get so what we need to do we need to predict the test score value so the student who have the features value 2 comma 9 it means the student who is just doing a study 3 hours and sleeping 9 hours if we are predicting this problem by the neural network then what the value we are getting okay that is my point Okay, what percentage or what the marks he or she got, she will get. So that based on this parameter, we will try to fit our model for the better neural network. So I am just representing my neural network by simple way. So you can see over here, two comma nine I am representing. So this is the one input value, and that is that is used by this one. Okay, that is used by this one. Nine is the other. The two input value we have over here. So two two node will be there, two comma nine, and here we have the hidden node. Okay. and that is the point we need to keep in mind based on the weight we will decide the hidden node so how many nodes how many uh, how many weights which are having by a particular node based on this parameter we will decide the hidden node so hidden node okay so i just write hidden layer will hidden layer will decide the number of the node the number of node based on based on weights based on number of the weights okay based on number of weights now tell me this part is clear Just tell me this part is clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so hidden layer. I am not assuming hidden layer number number of nodes should be three or four. It is depend on the number of the weights of the each and every node at the input layer. That is important point. So, okay, and so here we have the problem with this pattern over here. so you can observe over here what i have mentioned over here for your betterment then you can understand 
I can write the input layer. I can draw the Maya diagram at the input layer two comma nine, and we have the weights of the each and every node respectively. You can mention over here, and that is what you need to keep in mind. The weight of the uh, each and every node must contain between the zero and one because it can't be less than zero and it can't be more than. A weight can be negative, it's possible, depend on the what kind of the mechanism we are using. See. Uh, the weight can be measured by the technique which is known as the weight measurement technique uh, of the neural network. So, weight measurement technique is saying to us uh, how to choose the random weight. So, that is the method which is known as which defines the weight measurement technique. So, by using some statistical mathematical formula, the weight will be calculated by the neural network. Okay, that is the point we need to keep in mind. And what are the various weight measurement techniques? I will tell you into the our fifth model that is the neural network in deep learning. Okay, so don't worry, but here you have to keep in mind. The weight of any node at the input layer or uh, output layer everywhere, everywhere will be ranges from the zero to one. So here we have the random weight spectrum. And so two is uh, our one feature value and that contains the it weights. You can observe here 0 0.2, 0 0.6 for this node and 0 0.1. So you can observe here how many weights we have. Here we, uh, we can say three by two matrix. It means it means I have written over here three weights for the two inputs. Okay. So two input four we have the two nine. So for, first, for the first one we have the suppose first one we have the two value two no two feature uh, two value one feature value is two. It contains the three weights 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.1. So respectively, how many hidden nodes we have to take? We have to take the three node at the hidden layer. Okay, so that is what. So we have the first hidden node, we have the data. H1, second hidden node, we have the H2, next hidden node, we have the H3. Okay, and respectively, we have the uh, weight of the ninth, uh, ninth value of the feature, that is, we have the 0 0.8, 0 0.3, and 0 0.7. Now, this point is clear right now. Tell me, this point is clear? Yes, sir. How we are getting the hidden number of the hidden node at the hidden layer based on the number of the weight. And now see the features is contained in the feature because the node at the hidden layer will contain some weights and based on this parameter we will decide the number of the node at the hidden layer. Now this point is clear right now. Tell me any doubt. No doubt, sir. No, sir. Okay. So now what are the values you have? You have the features value, you have the input values or uh, at the input layer, and now you have the weight. So that is a, my a next activity in which we have to solve our problem. Now we are understanding this problem from this point. We have seen this is theoretically written over here. Uh, we have seen and now from this diagram, you can also observe over here. We have the input values. We have the input values of the input here. We have the weight of the input. So what is our next uh, task? Now, what is the next thing we need to take care of the hidden layer? Now keep in mind. In the hidden layer, hidden layer require if you're moving from input to hidden layer, then what is the things? We have an important point. Those are recognized by the something that the hidden layer will contain some some input. So how to generate or how to calculate the input for the hidden layer? So that is the next activity we will do. So here we have this part. So now uh, from this point, I'm going to start to calculate the input values for the hidden layer. So I can write over here and along with you can solve with me right now. So I'm just what is I'm calculating. I'm calculating the input value. For hidden layer. OK, so keep in mind for hidden layer. So how many nodes we have at the hidden layer? You can observe over here. How many nodes we have the three nodes? H1, H2 and H3. So I mentioned over here H1, H2 and H3. OK. So what is the in, uh, input values for the hidden? Just let me know this important point. So how we can get? So you can observe over here. I'm calculating right now. Just but in between, if you want to say something, then you can ask me right now. Or if you want to say something, you can speak something. Just tell me. Any doubt over here? No doubt, sir. No okay, doubt, no doubt. Sir. Okay, it so, will be given in the question, sir, right? Yes, so weight will be given in the questions, and input value will be given in the questions. Don't worry. Okay. Now tell me, should I continue or you have a doubt? No doubt, sir. Okay. No doubt. 
Okay, so input down. value. Okay, input value for the hidden layers. So how many nodes we have? The three nodes. H one comma, H two comma, and H three. And with this point, if I need to calculate the value of the H one, then I can write like this one. Input value for the H one. So how I can calculate? We use the summation function. So I can uh, solve this problem like this one: two into zero point two plus nine into zero point eight. Yes. So total value I am getting that is a zero point four plus. Seven point two. So, what is the value I am getting over here for the H one node? Seven point six. So, I can say these are seven point six the input values for the header. Okay. Now, is it clear right now? Tell me, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, because yes, this this snappy or interconnection is connected to the H one node, and this snappy interconnection is connected to the H one node. Now, now you can calculate H two value and you can calculate H three value. So seven point two to plus yes, sir. Seven two plus we are doing because this see what is the value of the input two? So two into see what is the formula of the summation functions? The formula of the summation function is if you remember this point zero to n oh sorry one to n and w i x. So first input we have the two, and that is multiplied by its weight, that is 0.2, and plus nine into its weight, that is 0.8. So we are getting the 0.4 plus 7.2. We are multiplying the 0.8 into the nine, so we are getting the 7.8. And after adding 0.4 plus 7.2, we are getting the 7.6. Now clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so student now calculate the what is the value of the H two I am getting. So please let me know you are getting the value. Three point nine. Okay, uh, according to uh, you, I am writing over here. So I need the answer from the other students if we are if they are having any different value. And what is the value of the H three? Please can you tell me? Yes, sir, I am calculating it. Yes, yeah, please. Six you can. Uh, seven point. Six point five. Okay, six point five. Okay. So uh, according to the students, I am writing over here the H1 value will contain the 7.6 and H2 will contain the 3.9 input values. That is the point we need to keep in mind. And H3 we are having the value 6.5. Okay. Yes. Any other student who is getting any different kind of the values, please let me know right now. H3 is 6.5. Okay, I have written over here. So you are getting any different values? Please let me know right now. So any other student who is getting any different values? Please let me know right now. Yes, student, tell me any other student who is getting any different values? So all are getting same values? H1, H2, H3? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. So now question comes in our mind. This node, we know the value of the input value of the hidden node that is a 7.6 or uh, 3.9 and 6.5 respectively H1, H2, H3. But how to trigger or how to see in the biological neuron we can say how to activate the neuron. So there are some function by which we can say the our, our neuron will be activated. Okay. So biological neuron will do no problem. But in the artificial neural network, how to activate this node? Point you need to keep in mind. How to activate this node? Then what is the thing we have? At the time we have a function that is known as the activation function. So activation function is saying to us when you need to activate your node at the uh, at the uh, hidden layer. Keep in mind activation function will be applicable uh, right now hidden node. Okay, no no need to acquire no need to require at the input layer. That is the point you need to keep in mind. Later on the other thing I will tell you one by one. So please listen right now. Activation function is applicable right now on the hidden node. Right now we are solving this problem. So what is the activation function we have seen in the upper previous class? That is a sigmoid. So sigmoid is what sigmoid is the activation function, and that part we have covered into the logistic regression as well. 
So Sigma Sigma is saying to us when you need to activate your uh, node at the header layer, then you can use the uh, any activation functions. Uh, we have the four important activation functions. Those are the tenh, sigma, relu, and and softmax. Okay, so these are the various uh, activation functions. But so far we have studied only the sigma uh, activation functions or sigma functions. So we will use only the same same such such activation function so we will not touch right now the other kind of the activation function okay now let us move to this point this is the solution right now the summation of the hidden the summation at the hidden layer from the input layer we are getting the this value so i have it now i was on this point right now so there are many activation functions out there so in this case we will stick to one on the one of the most popular ones because this is the sigmoid function if you remember the equation of the sigmoid function, then you can remember the fx is equal to 1 of 1, 1 plus e to the power minus x. That is the equations of the sigmoid function. And let me give you some idea over here. The sigmoid function will return the values, always return the values between 0 and 1 only. It can't return the value negative. And if you are getting the negative, if you are getting the values more than 1, it means you are doing some mistakes. It can have the values 1. But it can't uh, have the value more than one, and it can't have the value less than zero. So the value of the sigmoid function will generate the between the zero and one only. So that is the point you need to keep in mind. So what I am doing right now, I have written the equation that is the fx is equal to one upon plus e to the power fx, or we can say x. So what I am doing right now, I am transforming these equations right now e to the power x upon e to the power x plus one. I can write this equation why because I need to calculate the e to the power minus x. Then e is what is exponential, so I need to put the negative value. The better idea to I can just write my equation like this one for the my simplification calculation purpose. So now this point is clear to uh, this point is clear to all the students why we are using sigmoid function because sigmoid function itself is activation function and it is used to activate your node at the hidden layer. Okay. So how the neuron will be activated? So there's some function, there's something. So if we, if we are applying same thing over our neural network, then we have the sigma, so we have the some functions. But out of the so many functions, we are choosing only the one important function that is the sigma function. And keep in mind, sigma function always return the values between zero and one only. This summary right now. Now tell me any doubt over here, please. You can ask me right now. You have. Tell me, students. Do no, you have doubt, sir. No, doubt, sir. Okay. So now, now, right now. Yes, it's your responsibility right now. You can use paper pencil to solve your problem. So what the input value we are getting over here for the H1 and H2, I'm solving in front of you for the more better bit, then you can understand. So we got the value of the H1 as an input, 7.6, if you are remembering. And H2, we are getting the value 3.9. And H3, we got the value 6.5. So these are the input values. If I'm writing over here, like this one, uh, to activate. So okay, so I can write over here, activate, activate node, add hidden layer, add, add hidden layer. How we can solve this problem? Hidden layer. So we have the functions. What is the function? Fx is equal to e to the power x upon e to the power x plus 1. This x is what? This is the input values for this functions. So I can put this, I can put this value over here for the h1. So for the h1, I need to calculate the activation functions value to activate my node. So that is we have over here f7.6. I can solve this problem like this one and equal to the e to the power 7.6 i can write like this one of course without any doubt and i can write like this one e to the power 7.6 plus one and as we know e is an exponential value and it has the its values that can be identified by the mathematically 2.718 okay so what you will do you need to calculate the value of the this value and now tell me what value we are getting you are getting over here please tell me 
call and tell me put the values of the e and solve it and now tell me what value are getting so i can write i can write values over here okay i am just for understanding purpose i am just dividing you are not required to divide this note but i am understanding purpose so it is 0.999499 uh, 0.999 okay okay i am getting okay so i am writing over here and now tell me uh, the value of the h2 as well as h3 so 0.99 0.9994 we are getting now can you tell me the value of the h2 and h3 as well Zero point nine eight zero one for H two. Zero point nine eight zero one. Zero point nine eight zero one. One. Yes. Okay. Sir. Okay, and uh, uh, this can tell me the value of the S S three. Zero point nine nine eight one. Zero point nine nine eight one. See the student. You can observe over here. We are getting the values which it's lies between the eight four or eight one. Eight four it is. Okay, so tell me, other student. Uh, uh, can you tell me the majority value? So I know. I just need to write the correct value over here. Can you tell me the correct value? Zero point nine nine eight one or eight four. Eight four it is. Eight four for me. Okay. Okay, so I am just updating this value one two four now. See, this is the point you need to keep in mind. Now we have the values at the hidden layer as the input values as well as the activation values. Now tell me why activation function is required. See, activation function is required to activate the node on the particular layer, and after activating, this node will pass some information to the another layer. That is my point. So you can observe over here the output of the previous layer will be the input of the current. Clear. So definitely, if I'm moving to the output layer, if I'm moving to the output layer, so what is the input of the output layer? That is my point. So what is the input of the output layer? The input of the output layer will be the values which are generated by the hidden layer or hidden node. So what you can observe here, the node at the H1, H2, H3s are generated some values, and these are the input values of the output layer. So that is my point. You need to keep in mind. The input of the the input of the output layer will be the output of input of the output layer or input of the any layer will be the output of the previous generated or generated the previous layer. So that is the point you need to keep in mind. So what is the input of the output layer? You can observe here there are three different values. Those are identified by the 0.9994, 0.9801, and 0.9984. So the output of the H1, H2, H3 will be identified by the activation functions values of the H1, H2, and H3 over here. But now keep in mind when you're moving this node to this node, so yeah, it means you are doing something or just passing your information one node to another node or one layer to another layer. So this something is required. Some in, some connection we have, and this interconnection is known as the synapse in the biological neuron, and the artificial neuron network we have interconnection. And this interconnection value can be identified the weight of the interconnections. Okay, so it is interconnections. We have the three interconnections between H1 to output layer, H2 to output layer, and H3 to the output layer respectively. And each and every interconnections point, each and every interconnection will contain some weight. Okay, so why weight is required? Because there are some values required. So node contain own values. Okay, layer will contain some identity, some values, and generating and producing something. But what is the value of the in interconnection? So that is not represented by the weights. So that is the required of weight. So that is the point you need to keep in mind. So here some weights also given over here. So I'm I have not mentioned over there, but I am just mentioning the next part or next slide. Then you will see over here. So now we have this value. The in front of uh, the studies class, we got these values. Now we got this answer. Now this. Is 
Now calculate the values of the output layer. So how to calculate the values of the output layer? So just let me write the some points over here from previous inspired from the previous slide. And I'm just trying to explain this answer for you. Now the weight again will be given. Weight will also be given, but previously I have not mentioned to avoid your confusion. So now we have the weight over here that is 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.9 respectively to the H1, H2, H3. So what is the value we have generated? We have calculated that is a 7.6 over here. And we got the value you can write over here 0 0.9994. The H2, we got the value of the its input value, we got the value 3.9. And we got this value 0 0.9. 80 uh, what value we have used told me 0 0.1 okay now 6.5 we got this value and here you told me the value of this one 0 0.9984 okay please keep in mind 7.6 3.9 6.5 are the input values while the 0 0.994 and 0 0.9801 and 0 0.9984 the activation functions value that is the point you have to keep in mind here we have the weight and weight also will be given and this again weights i am speaking the weights are also generated by the weight measurement technique and then we will see this technique into the new network model okay that is the point you need to keep in mind we have the same thing over here so if i'm saying to viewers what is the value of the output layer as an input you will get it so i can write over here in values input values yes. let me write correctly input values of output layer now how we can get it can anyone tell me how we can get it the value of the input value of the output layer can you tell me The summation of activation function value and weights. Uh, yes, of course. So I can write the uh, calculation. Of, yes, yes, of course. So input of the output here, we can write like this one. I'm just writing over here. Then you have end out and you can, you can ask. Multiplied by the 0 0.4 plus 0 0.98. In between, you can use calculator or mobile phone to calculate the values. Please do it right now along with me. And next, we have the 0 0.9898. Uh, sorry, 9984. Uh, multiplied by the 0 0.9. So can you tell me what value we are getting? Yes, solve it and tell me what the value we are getting over here. Please tell me. 1.78. 1.78. 1 5. OK, 5. That is sufficient, no problem. OK, tell me any other student who is getting any different values. Please let me know right now. Yes, tell me any other student who is getting any different values. Please let me know right now. Yes, student, please tell me any other values are getting. Please tell me. Right so all are getting same values. Yes, sir. OK, so this is what is the, our output here. So now next, what is the question we have? See, we got the input values, but we don't know the its output value and that is to be generated by the output layer. So output layer will generate some values. So how we can get the output values of the output layer or output node at the output layer? So just let me clear to all once again. What is the output value of the output node at the output layer? Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me how we can get it? Yes, please tell me. Anyone who want to speak, please tell me. I need output value. Right now I'm writing over here. I need the output value of 
आउटपुट नोड एट आउटपुट लेयर नाउ टेल मी हाउ वी कैन गेट इट यस टेल मी हाउ वी कैन गेट इट दिस वैल्यू we can use some activation function super see activation functions will generate will activate this node to generate the some something in that one the output so of course we will the activation function so how we can get it the e to the power 1.785 divide by by the power 1785 plus 1 now tell me what value you are getting just tell me what is the value you are getting over here please calculate i know the value should be ranges from the 0 to 9 so i can write 0. Point something so i can write over 0. Point something tell me what the value you are getting after the decimal tell me what the value you are getting please tell me so 0.8561 okay i can write over just give me one second 0.85 sorry 85 Six three six one. Zero point eight five six or three something. What value are zero point eight five six seven. Six seven. Okay. So I can write over here zero point eight five six seven. This is the activation function value of this node. It means this node generate a value as an output that is known as the zero point eight five six seven. And that is the point you need to keep in mind. So when we have this point, now now we don't have any further process to uh, solve this problem. Right now we got each and every values. Now tell me right now, at any point you are having any doubts, so please let me know right now, or the everything is clear so far. Uh, sir, it's six three, not six seven. Okay, no problem. So I can uh, okay, just tell me it's six three or six seven. Please tell me, so I can update. Uh, six, six three. three sir. Okay, okay, six three. I can no six problem. Three sir. Okay, okay, no problem. Now, so what is this? Zero point eight five six three is what? Now, tell, can you even tell me what is this value? We are getting the activation function. No problem. What what is this value in our neural network and the our program as according to our program? What is this value? Test score. This is a test score value. So let me clear to all. This is my. This is the test score value, and that is known as the predicted test score values. Okay. So what is this? Just let me let me write over here. See, this is the your. I can write over here. Predicted. Predicted test score. Value. Test score. Okay, and what was the actual? Zero point nine two. So zero point nine two. If we have, so what is the difference between zero point eight five and zero point nine two? Okay, so we are very close to. So no problem. But we are getting the suppose we are getting the our value zero point six five. So it is two. Uh, we have the huge differences. But by as human being we can understand but machine cannot understand the machine will require some function to calculate the this error or we can say some loss and at the end the function is required that is known as the loss function okay so now but before telling me uh, telling about the loss function just tell me right now this point is clear to all right now how we are getting this predictive values yes sir okay so yesterday we have solved this problem okay the the slots as well so now this is the point 
Okay, they will calculate the 8.0.8567. Uh, so maybe they use uh, some uh, extra decimal to solve the problem. So right now, no problem. I'm just in right now this example, same example. We are getting the same values. We are no problem. But what is the back propagation over here? See, let me clear this point right now. From this point, of course, I'm taking your example for the betterment right now. See, what you can observe over here. This value we are getting the 0 0.8563 according to you. Okay, after getting this, after getting the good solution. But we are we are need we need the good accuracy. So we should the model should be accurate. So what you will do? What is the important point at which level at which point? What the value we should update to get the good accuracy? There is only one thing that is a bit. See input values we can update. We can't change it. We will choose only the as it is. That is a fixed value to comma nine. So we are using because we are not updating the features value. Feature will be as it is. Hidden value, hidden at the hidden at the hidden node. We are getting the uh, input values and activation functions values by calculation. So that value is not updated. Same thing at the output layer. But what is the thing that is to be updated? We can update the weight. Weight can be updated to provide the better accuracy. That is my point. And to update the weight, just let me inform to all once again. To update the weight, okay. To update the weight, so what the process will do? You are right now at the output layer. So what do you would go? You will move to the hidden layer and hidden layer to the input layer to update the to input the to, uh, to calculate something new. So 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.3, 0 0.7 we have, and we can update all these values. Not we can update, and our neural network will update these values, and randomly, uh, randomly it will choose, the network will choose the values between 0 and 1, followed by the weight measurement technique. The weight measurement technique in the neural network will decide or will generate the random values between 0 and 1 to each and every node as we have up to it. So 0 0.2 can be updated by the 0 0.25 maybe. 0 0.6 can be updated by the 0 0.4 some 5 maybe something. So no problem. We can choose, we can update any values. Okay. So after updating this value, so what is the technique, what is the process by which we can update at the time we have the method or the technique that is known as the back propagation. Okay. So back propagation we will see in deep leave with help of an example. Don't worry. In the neural uh, in the neural network model fit. So that is a known as the back propagation. Back propagation. Okay, so that is my point. So back propagation is applicable where when we need to update the value to get the good accuracy in the neural network. Okay, so this is the my point. Now this point is clear to right now. Tell me this point is clear. So why back propagation required? Tell me. Is it clear to all right now? Just tell me any other student. Tell me, students, do you have any other problem? Clear, clear, sir. So everything is clear to all. How we are getting no, this value? Okay, can I move to the next slide? Okay. Now. So theoretically, what we have seen with the help of the, these four different bits, uh, as it is mentioned over the work diagram. Our neural network will calculate the 0 0.85 as our test score. And however, our target value was that is the actual value was the 0 0.92. So our result was not poor. So it just um, we can say is not the best. It can be. How it can be? It just not is the best, but we can be. How we can get the best score by applying the back propagation technique. So we just got a little lucky. We are uh, I'm choosing the random weight for this example. And of course, you can update your weight to get the good accuracy. And uh, in the back propagation, we need to do something with the, some other factor as well. We have the learning rate. Okay, so there is a long process. There are long and you use the derivation long process we have. So definitely, uh, uh, in the neural network, you will see all the things with the help of the some example. So the point again we have over here: how machine will generate the errors? What is the error we have? So that is the calculating error. So one way to represent the loss function by using the mean sum squared error. In the regression, we have used the mean squared error. Okay. 
in the classification we have to find the calculation or uh, by the accuracy precision recall but here in the new network what is the thing that is known as the uh, error error calculation so we have the loss function this loss function can be identified by the mean sum squared loss function okay that is the point you need to keep in mind so what the value are getting so i can explain over here then you can understand see 0.5 i can write over here and what is the actual value we are getting what is the actual value 0.92 and what is the value we are getting over here 0.85 okay 0.85 you have that is a predicted values so o represents the predicted values and y is the actual values so i can write like this one 0.92 if i am just subtracting this value and definitely it contains square so i can write the 0.5 multiplied by the 0.7 whole square of the 0.7 and i can write this value 0.5 multiplied by the 0.49 so we will get this value that is can be identified by the 0.245 so the point you need to keep in mind when we are getting the values and which is close to zero suppose in the loss function we are getting the value very is close to zero then we can say we have the minimum error so that can be ignored but we are we are getting the values close to the one that it means in our network the model contain the user so 0.2 is close to the uh, zero so we can say it's okay we don't know, we we have right now uh, no hard and hard error okay we can say simple error so we can consider so that is the point you have to keep in mind after getting the uh, calculation loss function our goal is to get the close the or as much as get the close value suppose you are getting the you are suppose you are getting the high values of the loss just like 0.7 or 0.65 something it is very uh, it is very uh, not a good values it means we have the huge error so what is our aim our aim should be minimize the loss and at the time back propagation only the one method that can resolve this problem so back propagation is a method or technique that is used to minimize the loss in the neural network that is the definition of the back propagation very simply so back propagation technique is a concept in which we will, we will minimize the loss of the our uh, loss uh, we will use the minimize the loss in the neural network that is the point we need to keep in mind but what is the loss we can generate we can calculate the loss by the mean sum squared function that is point we have over here so i have calculated each and everything over here now tell me any doubt over here now tell me any doubt over here yes tell me any doubt over here you have Okay, so tell me everything is clear. Do you have any doubt? Just please let me know right now. Yes, clear all. Okay, everything is clear. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So after understanding this point, if I am just uh, telling to all right now, suppose you right now you are using the another features like this one. R study is one R and sleeping R is one. and our actual value was the 86 then you so you will try to solve this problem by using the same number of the weights which is written over here okay then you just need to find the you just need to find the values of the target values or say values of predicted value and see what is the error you have so this kind of question this kind of the uh, pattern uh, based question may ask into examination as in the tutorial okay so you are required to go this slide to know each and everything in proper way so everything is clear to all that's good so go ahead. now tell me you have any doubt any other who have any doubt please tell me now